Hi folks, uh, we're back again today to show you how to make teapots and we're also going to be working with pitchers and what I've done to begin with is this. I've set it up so that I've thrown all the pottery uh, the day before and today I'm going to show you the different ways to put the teapots and the pitchers together. Another point of this particular uh, demonstration is to show you different forms and different shapes of teapots and pitchers so that you get a variation of ways in which they are put together and the aesthetic parts of the different forms to give a different viewpoint. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to with this one right here and this is a, a little different type of a teapot in that uh, the way I've handled it is somewhat different than normal and I'll show you that right now. now I threw this in a normal way except for right at the end instead of bringing the lip of the pot up as I did on this one over here, I push the lip inward so that it gives it kind of like a an apple shape. The form comes up and then it goes back in. And another thing that's somewhat different about this particular teapot is the handled the lid. The lid has a little flange here that I've put on to keep it in place. One of the things that we have to deal with with teapots is when we tip the teapot, to we want the lid to stay on. So what I did is I cut a little flange out here and I've set it up so that you can like this and then you can turn it and then that flange will hold it in place when you go to pour. Okay? It's still in the greenware state, so we very delicate with it at this point. Okay. I'm going to take this particular spout because I have this particular form, this spout would work better. And the reason is, is because I don't think the a real long spout, say for instance like this one here, would really lend to it aesthetically. So I'm going to show you right now how to take a, a spout and put it onto the teapot. Okay, now <clears throat> in order to get the tea through the spout, of course, to have an opening over here and there's two different ways that I teach doing this and one of them is to take a fettering knife which is a traditional tool in ceramics and it has a very sharp movement to it so what I do is this. Now this is the way I was taught to, to put teapot spouts on originally when I was working at Eastern Michigan University as the head technician of the ceramics lab. And this is another way here. This is a, a tube that has been given a handle and then they've cut it on a handle so that it goes into the teapot and it does the same basic thing. You go in and pull it out and oftentimes the little piece of clay that comes out will stick inside so I just poke through more and then it falls down inside the pot and I pick it out later.
Now, the rationale and have multiple holes rather than one hole is because if you're using tea leaves as people have in the past, you don't have the leaves coming out in abundance the way they would if you just had a large hole. Now, one of the very critical things about putting a teapot spout on is this. Say, for instance, if I put my spout on like that. If I put it on like this, then the water level of this teapot is right at this level of the spout here. So anything that you would pour into it, if it it would start running out because the, the lip of this spout would be too low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on an angle like this. And because it's on an angle like this, the T level or water level in here will be up to here. And I think that that's one of the most important things you could get involved with when you're working with a teapot. Okay, now I have a a fork here, just a regular dinner fork, and I use this for scoring, which is taking and roughing up the clay right around here, and I use a fork because you've got four, four little teeth coming in there, and it, it roughs it up much quicker. And I'm going to do it on both the I'm going to do it on both of the spout and on the teapot. Okay. Now, right here I have a pouring cup that I have filled with what I what we call slip. And what it is, is it's just a thick solution of gloppy clay. And I like to use a thick solution in this manner because it makes a better glue than just water. Get some on here too. And then I put it on. And what I do is I turn it. And by turning it back and forth just a little bit, like I'm doing right now, it starts to set on there. Now I can barely turn it at all, and that's a sign that it's really in a good position to be welded on. And the way I weld it on is I take this wooden tool and I start pressing the clay from the spout into the clay of the pot. Go all the way around. This is very important too. If you don't do this very well, 
scrunch it in nicely. It could separate later. I'm going over with my fingers because my fingers give a nice smooth effect and make the clay have a nice soft transition from the spout to the pot. More than a hard wooden tool would. Now, if you'll notice, what I did was this. I set my little flange on the side of the pot so that when I put this back on and turn it, the flange will be towards the back. So when you go to pour, it will catch at the back part and help hold it in place while you're pouring. Okay, now, after I've got this portion done, I'm going to take the lid off because I'm going to work on this just a little bit more. Then you make a handle. Now, I've already made some handles here. I've pulled them. But for you, I'm going to pull another one so that you can see how I did it. I pulled these others ahead of time because I wanted to have some that were stiff. Okay. Here I have a pan of water. Now I'm going to have to stand up for this because that's the way I pull my handles by standing up. So if I go back with our camera a little bit. And what I've done is originally I rolled this clay into this kind of thick form, long form, and then I start pulling the handle like this. Now, in order to pull a handle that is flat on these on both sides here and then is wide here, I hold my hand basically like that. And I'm able to run it through here. And I also hold my thumb on the other side like this because that helps give it a smooth effect. Now, if you notice, I'm also turning it. I turn it like this, and then I turn it back like this as I'm pulling, because what it does is your hand has a different contour as you're pulling it down, and by turning it back and forth, the, the two positions cause the handle to become an even it has an evenness about it. Now I'm running my thumb down the center. And the reason I do that is because it's, it's more or less an aesthetic thing. Many people who make teapots do it that way because it has a nice, graceful look to it when you're finished. Now one of the things that happens generally when you're pulling a handle like this is that have the tip area right down here fall off and that shouldn't discourage you that happens to every pulls handle 
between, like right here, see here, because there it goes. Handle this. Well, you're finished. You can lay it out. I lay these here. This is still pretty flexible. Where you turn them up, like this already it takes the basic of a pen to go on to a cup or a teapot, sure, and that get away from it. Too long, and you're a basic shape, and then you won't have to curve. Try to curve it after it has set up somewhat. Start cracking. So that's one of the things that you want to avoid. We have dry here. this. I'm going to take this handle here and see if I think I'm going to have enough to hold itself on and by placing it where I'm going to put it. And it looks like it's going to hold its form. So I'm going to go ahead again to my. Now, this is another critical point, and only because it's very easy to set it up, handle, could off the side, lined up directly across the spout. And you that'd be a hard thing to do. Getting the spout that far, but it can happen. So that's one of the things you watch out for. Okay. Take my hand. I'm getting it directly across from the other, and I start pulling it back and forth the way I did with the spout. And once it feels like it doesn't want to jiggle much anymore, then you're pretty close to having it on. Then I take my fingers and I Squish it down. And I can also take my wooden tool and form that in too. Okay, now that handle looks pretty droopy right now, but I clean it up. And then I'll look at it, see how it looks in terms of movement to it. And score it a little bit underneath here. Where I'm going to put the I'm getting myself some more slip. Put that on. And now I press this in. And again, I'm kind of jiggling it as I press it in. I'm going to smooth it. Like this, taking my 
finger, pressing the clay from the handle right into the clay of the pot, just like I did with the spout. Okay, now there are different things I can do with this little thing that's left over here. A little spraying. I'm going to spray these too because here in the, under the studio lights, all this stuff out really fast and I'll be working with clay like consistency of wood. I don't do that. Okay, now one of the things I could do if I wanted to is roll this around. So, and generally what I do is put it on and if I like it, leave it. I don't particularly like it on this one, so I'm going to pull it off and then the rest of this down. Okay, now I have some the slip up here has squished somewhat from underneath the handle. Put it on, so I'm going to just clean that up a little bit. Okay, just for a little as final aesthetics, and take a little all of the and a little slip in here, put it on. And this is all that helps to hold this handle in place. I'm going to press it in like this and take the Again, pick off the slip that squirts out around the side. Teapot that's pretty much finished. What we do next is we biscuit and then glaze it and we need to use it. Okay. Now I'm going to trade this for another teapot form. This one is a, a different kind of thing. There aren't too many people who make teapots this way in the commercial world. And the reason is because it's a, it's a harder form to throw. It's a harder spout to throw by far. And it's a hard to keep clean after you've made it. 
And that's because it has a long spout. Okay. Now, in order to throw a spout like this, what I did was, is I threw just what you'd call a, a small bottle. The form came down, came down like this, came around just like that. And what I did was I cut it off on an angle and made it so it would fit this particular pot this way. Now, I am not going to go through the whole process of putting this together again like I did with the other one because it'll just be repetitious and that, that won't do you any real good. But what I want to do is I want to show you uh, the basic aesthetics of how I'm going to assemble it and how I'm going to give it a, a, a graceful feel. Okay. So here we go. Putting the holes in again. into hidden my fork here somewhere. Let's see. Here we go. I left it in the pot. A slip. Okay, I'm gonna quickly score this because I do want to get the spout on for you so you'll get a, an idea of how it's gonna look when the pot is totally finished. Okay. Like I said, I gotta keep watering these things down out of here. And score this again. But I'm gonna have to watch really pretty close how I score this one because I want to score it to the contour of the of the spout. Okay. And I can outline it, the spout, like this, and that way I'll know exactly where to score. to the slip. around again to get it to go on there firmly. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go through all the process of smoothing on it. Just uh, waste your time. But what I want to do is this. I want to show you that looking at the teapot the way it is right now, for me, it still isn't quite aesthetically pleasing. I think it can be more pleasing. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to trim the spout mouth with my needle. And hopefully, when I get it done, it'll look better. about that because sometimes when you're 
dealing with new forms. When you cut something off, it can look worse. And then you're stuck with it. <laughs> Till you go back to your wheel and throw another piece to take its place. Okay. Now, I am going to look at this thing and align it and make sure that it's looking correctly from all the different angles. And I'm also going to smooth this off because when I cut through it kind of gives a torn effect. So I wanted to clean that off too. Now, possibly in this world of people criticizing other people, they'll say, well, I liked it better the way it was. But I, I do think that I like it better this way. Okay, I'm going to spray that again because I do want to finish this thing off later so it'll be a finished teapot rather than just a demonstration. Hopefully in another segment we can, after I show glaze pottery, can bring it back after it's fired and then you can see it as a finished pot if everything works out and doesn't get blown up in a bisque or something like that, which happens to everybody. <clears throat> okay, now I want to talk about this lid because this lid is basically the same type of lid that I'm going to make to put onto this pot. Now what it is, it's called a drop lid and it fits so into the pot and miraculously it pretty much fits this pot too, at least before it dries out. So that's the type of lid that I'm going to put on there. And I'll show you that in a little later too when I do demonstrations off the wheel. Again, with lids. Okay, I'm gonna put this over here because I don't wanna go through putting on another handle since we just put one on over here. And I wanna to talk to you about another type of teapot. And you may look at this and say, well, that looks pretty much like any other teapot I've ever seen in my whole life. Well, it may look that way, but it isn't. It's quite different from most teapots that you'll ever meet. And the reason is this. When I first made this form, I threw it in the same way that I would throw a bottle rather than uh, throwing it like this one where I have an open top, I threw this form up and then I threw it all the way up and closed the bottle. I closed the bottle to the point where there was no hole left in the lid. And what I did do was this. When I came up, I threw it normally right up to this point here. And at this point, I let the clay stay thicker so that it was probably oh, about three-eighths of an inch thick. Then when I closed the bottle up, I went back to the wheel after it had set up for a while and came in with my needle. And I came in on the, with it on the, on the wheel with my needle and I came down with an angle like this. I cut through the pot all the way around so that this became a lid. Now the reason I cut on an angle like this 
is because if I cut horizontally, then the, the, the lid will have nothing to sit in. It will just sit on top and it can slide anywhere it wants to. If I cut it vertically, well, then the lid would fall into the pot. So cutting it with, cutting it with an angle about basically the way you see it right now, I get an angle on the shelf. I create a shelf for the lid to sit on. I apply the spout the same way that I would uh, the others. And I wanted to show you that technique because that's, uh, I think, a really good technique if once you learn how to throw bottles to make a, a teapot or you could make it into a, a regular pot. You wouldn't have to put a spout on it. You could just leave it and then you'd have another form. Have your lid and your pot all in one, one action. Okay. Now I want to show you another type of teapot. This one right here. Now I'm going to spend a little time on this one because it's a, a fairly difficult teapot to put together compared to some of the others because it's got a foot and it makes it a little more difficult because the foot is thrown separately. Okay, now I'm quickly going to show you how I did that by using an example. Okay, I've thrown this ring Originally, this was the top. Threw it up, gave it a little flange here, and then I let it stiffen up so that it's stiff enough that when I put the rest of the teapot on, it's going to hold up and hold it in place. Okay. I want to spray that with a little water there because, as I said, these lights are rough. I have to keep doing this or we'll lose my picture forms here. And I'm beginning to do that. They're starting to stiffen up. So I'll probably have to spray them a little more often. <laughs> okay. Take my fork again and I score this along here. And I want to spray again because this is getting pretty stiff here. Then I'm going to put the slip in. Okay, now this is the other part to the teapot, and the way I did this one was I just threw a bottle. It's a bottle, but I must admit that it's not a normal bottle. It's a heavier bottle than normal. The reason it's a heavier bottle than normal is because, here, let me kind of situate this right here. The reason it's a heavier bottle than normal is because I'm going to put it on the wheel and I'm going to cut into the wheel the same way I showed you on the previous teapot by spinning the wheel around and then just coming in on an angle and cutting the lid that way. And this is the way this lid over here was formed. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go through all the time at this particular point to put, to mold this all together because it will take a lot of time and I don't want to do that because I'm sure that you can figure out that I simply put it on here the same way that I put this spout onto this pot. So, I'm going to set this over here, 
and I'm going to discuss the finished piece with you a little more. Okay? Now, I showed you just a couple minutes ago how to pull a handle, a handle that is wide this way and narrow this way. This particular handle I didn't pull that way because I wanted to have a different effect. I wanted a handle on this particular pot that was round. This pot is basically a round form. It's just a round bottle, a round foot. And I just wanted to carry through and have the handle be round. So when I pull the handle, rather than pulling it, I get a flat area on two sides pulling down like this, I kept turning it, turning it, and turning it in order to make that handle round all the way around. And then I let it sit up for a little while, stiffen up so that when I put it on and put it into the configuration that it has right now, that it would stay in place. And uh, that's how I got that one together. Okay, let me... First, get myself a little space here. I'll put it back over here. And now I just want to show you some basic different styles of pots, teapots. Now see that? See that's already holding its curve. And it's holding its curve very quickly because we're under these very warm lights. Okay, looking at these different pots, we have basically different configurations than I showed you on the others. I would say is probably the most normal teapot. It's very similar to a teapot that I was taught to make at Eastern Michigan University where I did my ceramics work. This one, <clears throat> this one is uh, thrown very similar to the way that I would throw this form except I gave a more of a straight sloping edge and then a more of a horizontal coming across this way then coming up. Now this lid is uh, a little different than this one over here in that I throw this one upright and I throw this one upside down. This is the way this one is thrown and then I just turn it and set it up on here. Okay, now for those of you who have lid before, Introduce you to calipers. Calipers are used this way. You take the calipers and you make a measurement of the interior of the form when it's in its moist state. And you get the measurement, set this down, you go back to your wheel, spin it around, center a little bit, get this flange to come up, then you come back and you make the measurement this way on your pot lid, and then you, when you have them matching up, then you just, you're finished, cut it off, and then as soon as they're stiff enough that you can pick them up without them deforming, then you can put them back on here and then you have your lid. Okay, now this particular teapot is made to have a different kind of handle. And I have a couple of those different types of handles here with me today. And I'm going to show you basically how you would go about assembling it. After this teapot has been glaze fired, it's in a bisque state now. After you put your glaze on, you fire it, then you would take the handle and you would take these little flanges here and underneath on both sides you have a teapot with a handle on the top okay and then you can pour it this one I assembled for you it has a drop lid similar to one 
see. And then I want to talk to you about this one is because number one, it has a different kind of handle. I have a handle that's on the top like this, and it's a, a, a nice thing. It's an aesthetic, a different aesthetic altogether than the ones like this. But you have one problem when you make a teapot like this that you don't have when you have over here. I can lift this off and it doesn't have, it doesn't bump into anything. If I take this lid and if I had made the lid so that it would come up and then when you want to take it out, you couldn't get it out because you put your handle on and you put it on lower like this and it can happen, believe me. You can make a handle that way without thinking. Put your lid in to begin with. Put your handle on, and if it's too low, then you have a pot that you can never get your lid off of, and you won't drink too much tea with a teapot like that. That's for sure. Okay. Okay, now I want to talk to you about pitchers, some pitcher forms, different types, and uh, I'm going to start with this one here. Now, this particular form is similar to one that I threw in the demonstration on wheel throwing, and it also is similar to this particular pot right here just smaller, and with some variations in the, the neck. This is a shorter neck. It has a little flat, kind of a flattened area here that I put in with a wooden tool. And I'm going to show you now how I put the lip area on the pot. Okay. Now I threw this form, nice long neck. And then I flared it out at the top. And now I'm going to show you how I, this portion worked up that way. Okay, now what I do is I take my finger like this, and I take my thumb and my other fingers over here, and I start squeezing it up, squeezing it up like this. And of course, when I do this, I have to make sure that the pot is moist. If you do this a little too a little too late, then you'll have it crack and fall away. And if you do it a little too early, when you put it in its form, the shape that you want to finish with, then it'll just go right back to the original state. So, I'm going to, quite a, quite a pinch job here, so I get this area pretty close together, okay? A little moisture here. Okay, I'm just smoothing this out because I want to make sure that no cracks form. Okay, so now we have the form set up like this, and it gives it a nice pouring spout. Okay.
Now I want to show you another one that's very similar, except on this one. What I'm going to be doing is making it so that it also has a handle. Okay, same way as before. I take the pot and I push up like this and I start forming this way. Okay. Okay, now with this one, I'm not going to pinch it together as tightly as I have with the other. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because this particular pitcher could be used for a different type of purpose. Say, for instance, you pinch it together this way and you start to pour with something that has ice cubes in it, the, the pinch, the tight pinch, will hold the ice cubes back. While with this type of one, you want the ice cubes to go into the glass when you're pouring it, well then you don't have as much of a pinch. And then you can just put it right in, get your ice right into your glasses along with it. Okay, now also with this particular one, I want to put a handle on and I'm going to talk to you very similarly as when I did when I did it with the teapots, you get it across directly from the spout, score both areas, and get a little slip. Start working that handle into the pot. And again with the tool. Oops. slip the tip of my bowl here and press that into place.
And again, I squish the clay down in order to get it so it'll work and adhere to the pot real well. And again, I'm going to also use a ball of clay to help reinforce this. Now this one here, again, is quite similar to the one that I have right here. Now I'm not going to bother putting a handle on it, and it's basically the same thing as with the others. Again, I form the lip. And I gave you these different shapes just so you'll have different ideas on how you can get a different type of look to your pots. And uh, <clears throat> on this particular one, I took little balls of clay and kind of squish them down on the edges of the handle so that you could help reinforce this handle right here. I did that all around it, as you can see. Okay, I want to just mention to you before I put this away that this particular pot, if you look closely here, has what's called throwing rings. And what this is as your fingers come up while the pot is being thrown, you have little ledges that are formed. And one of the neat things about that type of technique is that when you add the glaze later, depending on the glaze, you can get different color effects. Because certain glazes, when they're thin, will be one value and one particular color. And where it's thick, it'll be another value and it'll be another color. And these throwing rings will catch the glaze and right at the top of ring, the glaze will be caught there in a ring around the pot, and you'll have the two transitions in glaze color. And so throwing rings are something that you can use as a design element in your pot. This one here doesn't have the throwing ring, so it'll just have a smooth, basic smooth effect as it goes down. Okay, now I want to show you just a few other basic pitcher types so that you'll be able to get a different view of different types. This one is very similar to this one over here, except that the handle comes from the lip up here and goes down to this portion here. And obviously this one is down at the base of the neck on the bottle and then comes around like here. This one is a different basic form. It's rounder. The opening at the top is wider. And so you can put different types of uh, things in there. You can put ice cubes in this one, while in these two you wouldn't be able to put the ice cubes in because it just wouldn't fit. This would work better as a wine pitcher, while this one would work better for things where you want things to fall out. Okay, uh, that's about it for pictures, and we'll see you later with more ceramics.